Hi, I'm Roger and welcome back to the Tractor Tech channel. Had a very busy day today messing with the firewood. Last night we cut and split a load of boiler wood for a customer. The customer always brings his own dump trailer and we cut and split it right on the trailer. We've done it so many times I've gotten pretty good at estimating how many logs to get off the log pile. Last night I came up like four pieces of wood short I think. And then this morning when he came and got the wood he wanted another load so while he was going with the trailer we went ahead and cut and split another load for him then my dad is out now delivering a load on our trailer to a customer we're starting to get caught up on the firewood orders we're running a little bit behind this year which isn't normal but it's just been a lot going on for us to keep up with them i have one guy that still needs a load no i have two people that still need wood and then the guy with the dump trailer he's going to get another load or two of boiler wood and you can see behind me the log pile is starting to shrink down to about nothing which is a good thing i'll be glad when that's gone because i can go ahead and order some more and get started for the 2022 2023 firewood season we're expecting a snowstorm tomorrow i'm not sure how much we're going to get it started out like 12.4 inches last time i looked it was down to eight inches mixed with some freezing rain and sleet haven't looked in a few hours to see what's happening but you know how that goes when it starts snowing they kind of may drop or it can go up you know they may say seen before where they'll say four to six inches the next thing you know it's eight to ten twelve to fourteen or it can go the other way so who knows what's going to happen tomorrow but I have a chainsaw here that's cutting crooked I want to show you that and talk about that a bit and then show you how I'm going to fix that problem. Right, so I'd normally never ever cut with a chain like that as you can see it's not cutting very well and look at how nice and crooked it's cutting it's horrible when you go to put something like that on the splitter that's crooked it's dangerous because it increases the possibility of it flying off of your splitter so let's go inside and look at this chain all right, I'm back inside now after cutting with the chain that's pulling badly. Now, the first thing everybody's probably thinking, well, somebody hit something with this chain on one side to make the side dull so it's not cutting. But if you look at it, the cutters are sharp on both sides. But if you look, this cutter's short, long, short, long, really short, long, long, short, long, short, really short. This chain's actually not very much good. Then we got a long cutter, short. I don't know why when people hit something, they go ahead and sharpen them cutters back like that because it's still not doing anything. You might as well just kind of bring it back slowly with the other ones, that's what I usually do. But our main problem is cutters on this side of the chain are longer than this side. So now if you have one of these depth gauge tools and throw that on there, you can see the depth gauge looks good. Looks good. But we're getting a false reading because since this cutter is filed back more than what this cutter is, 
and this cutter's filed back more than what this cutter is, and so on, this tool is averaging it out since it lays across multiple cutters. So these cutters here, the depth gauge is probably okay on it, but this one over here, it's way, way too high. I mean, you can see that left cutter there is barely even taking a bite. So another way you can check these is with a tire tread depth tool. I already have this zeroed. Let me switch hands. And it's still not going to be 100% right in an application like this. So we're 20 thousandths, we should be 25. Yeah, and that one's 50, 53. Wait. That one's 39. This one's 30. About 27. So this chain is a mess. But I'm going to see if I can limp it along just a little bit to extend the life of it, if you even want to call it that, I'm going, let's say to get the most life out of this chain, I'm going to file the cutters back on the right side to the length of these cutters here because this is what most of the cutters are on the left side. So I'll get a caliper and measure that, see what it is, and we'll go to work on it here in just a minute. All right, so we're about 6.8 millimeters versus 7.8. So I need to take about a millimeter off of these cutters here. And we'll see what that does. Now, I know you all know I have chain grinder. I have the Granberg file and joint, which is a jig. I have an organ. I have various ways of sharpening a chainsaw. But I recently got a new way to sharpen a chainsaw chain. It's a CC, pretty much Dremel, rotary tool, whatever you want to call it. It's powered by a 12-volt lithium battery. It came with a charger. It came with this tool kit. It comes with 5 30 seconds, 3 16 and 7 30 seconds grindstones so I can sharpen a chainsaw chain with it. Now, the good thing about this is it's lithium-ion lithium battery-powered. So I could take it with me if I'm cutting somewhere and if I mess a chain up, I can use this to quickly whip it back into shape versus using a file. So that's why I kind of wanted this tool. Plus, it's nice to have a battery powered Dremel around. I have this big set from Harbor Freight, which is actually pretty decent of accessories. And I had to use this diamond stone on it the other day. It also comes with this guide which I'll show you just here in a minute how it attaches, but it has a 25, 30, and 35 degree angles on it to help you sharpen a chainsaw chain. I don't want to dig them out, but it did come with three different size collets. Of course, I have one in the tool right now. That's nice, so you can use various tools with it. And I do like that it came with this little plastic case. So if I want to take it somewhere, all my accessories are contained and easily portable. So I'll go ahead and get the 730 seconds stone on this. If you're interested in purchasing one of these rotary grinders, I will have a link in the description so you can do that. So to, to attach the guide, just loosen the cap on the end of the tool a little bit, slide the guide on, and there we go. So I've got my work cut out for me messing with this chain. It's probably really should just be thrown away. Putting a paint mark there on that cutter. So I know where I started. You should be able to tell where you started, but as I'm sharpening a chain, I like to be able to look and say, oh, I'm halfways or whatever.
You can see how nice that cutter looks. I need to go around and do the rest. You can see how much shorter that one is in comparison to this one. So I have a lot of work to do. Once I get that done, we'll take a look at the depth gauges again. All right, so we're back revisiting the depth gauges. And since that cutter's been sharpened, it actually looks, it's just a tad low. And checking it with the tread depth tool. I'm getting about 23. I'm not sure how accurate these are. I'm starting to question these. It's a mass produced piece that's stamped out. Last night when I was sharpening a chain, it didn't seem like it was working too well. So I switched over to this, which I really don't use that much, but I don't know. I, I really question how well these work. I'm going to have to check into that more in the future before I condemn them. But this seems like to be a fairly accurate way to test. I got this one a few years ago for like five bucks, I think. They're readily available. It does do inch and millimeters. Okay, need to go around and check the rest of these. Then we can go back outside and try the saw, see how it performs with the freshly sharpened chain. All right, so we're back out here with the saw now that has been sharpened. Let's see how much better it'll cut. I think that looks pretty good now. Now, I know somebody's probably gonna say something about this piece of wood. Yeah, it does have some sap rod on the outside, but in the middle, that thing is extremely, extremely hard. I mean, it is a very dry piece of wood. Both the freshly sharpened chain, the chain did cut better. It's not trying to cut circles like it was before. Pretty happy with the way it's working now. The more I use this, I am liking it better. It does seem like it runs pretty cool. I'm not sure about a diamond cutter. I know there are certain types of cutters that do like pull the heat away from the material that you're grinding on. And I did get more aggressive with this as time went on and it did not get the cutters hot. I showed the one time that after grinding aggressively on the cutter, I was able to touch it, that it was that cool. It does make it really easy with the jig on there to keep the right top plate angle as a bonus you also have a cordless dremel these nowadays it's just a pain in the butt to use any tool with a cord because we're so spoiled with all of our battery powered power tools that you even hate to break out an old corded power tool anymore at least i do and this was nice the other day because i actually needed to use it up underneath of a truck and on a creeper and been a little I mean, it wouldn't have been that difficult to string a cord, but a lot easier just to roll underneath there, especially on a creeper. Then you don't have to worry about rolling over top of the extension cord you're using with the creeper. And you're a lot more mobile with a tool without a cord hanging on it and in your way. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Did a bunch of work today. Got a bunch of stuff straightened up around here. The dump trailer is back in its parking space for the first time since probably the first part of November. I blew a ton of leaves today. I got a load of boiler wood cut. The customer picked up two loads as I mentioned. A load on our trailer was delivered to a customer so I'm getting caught up on the wood orders. And the guy's supposed to bring the dump trailer I think tomorrow before it snows. 
so we can work up another load of boiler wood but his driveway is really bad so i don't know how long the trailer may set here but that's no big deal really getting the itch to go out and cut firewood the splitter is working great with the new belts i put on there i must have got the tension right because we've used it a couple of times now haven't had to adjust the belts I also put a new belt on the conveyor. I found out it had the wrong belt on it the whole time we've had it. We didn't put that belt on there. Somebody, the previous owner put that on there. But the belt they had on there was too narrow of a belt. It needed an A belt as I talked about in my last video. And it's working a lot better with the proper belt on there. Looking forward to getting out and cutting some firewood. I have some saws that I want to play with. That 372 that I built that I don't have much run time on. But I have it running really good now and want to see what it's going to be like. I have a lot of videos planned for you guys. My biggest problem right now is the time of me getting out to shoot them. Like right now it's pretty late. Alexa, what time is it? It's 11.42 p.m. So it's 11.42 p.m. down here shooting the outro for this video. And I still have to edit it to get it out for you guys tomorrow. I do have some tractor videos planned for you guys. Just this time of year is firewood season for me and again the time thing. But I do want to make some tractor videos for you guys. It's just that right now I'm doing firewood so that's what I can make videos of or I'm or I'm sharpening chainsaw chains or something like that. So that's what I'm making videos. I've made stuff of things that I really do. I'm not like some people and sit around and think oh I need to make a video for my channel what can I do it's no I'm going to go do something and I'm going to record myself doing whatever it is so I hope you guys enjoyed this video 